recently on the floor of the 2012 MBAA convention, there are obviously a lot of very glitzy things going on, new airplanes, new engines, new avionics, a lot of exciting things, but the fact of the matter is ultimately it all resolves to one person and one person only, and that is the person making a decision in any airframe at any time. And of course, how you arm those people with the requisite information and intel and so forth is one thing, but training them for the unusual, the, the thing they don't expect, the right field, if you will, is a huge issue, and obviously you're trying to tackle that. Tell me about UAT. Well, Jim, you're exactly right. Uh, UAT is sort of a branch from the uh, normal safety direction of recurrent training, and, and more and more flight operations are uh, taking a little bit away from the repetitiveness where the learning plateau uh, flattens out and now branching to the side for different types of training. Talk about the UAT program. We saw during the press conference last night that you had a very detailed program when it came to the amount of commitment in terms of time and resources necessary to run somebody through both a VFR and IFR unusual attitudes training program. This program is a very comprehensive program, uh, not only from the ground school standpoint, which covers the aeromedical aspects of why people can get false sensations or vertigo or illusions in that area, which is a very important part of prevention of an unusual attitude. And the aerodynamics, if I'm there, what are the best ways to recover? From there, we step into the VFR, the contact side. In other words, okay, looking outside, the real world is present. And then to the final step, which we take a lot of pride in, is the full-up IFR side with glass cockpits as close as we can get to the corporate jet and allowing people to safely experience unusual attitudes in a controlled environment and learn from that. The DFC-90 all-digital attitude-based autopilot delivers significant performance and safety improvements over previous generation systems. Its innovative flight envelope protection guards against autopilot-induced stalls, and the straight and level mode provides one-button recovery from unusual attitudes for an added measure of safety. Immensely popular within the Cirrus community, the DFC-90 is now being made available for a growing list of aircraft including Piper Matrix and Mirage, Cessna 182s, and Beach Bonanzas and Barons. Fly with confidence. Fly with DFC-90. You know, UAT, even though uh, it's new to the field and certainly new to NBAA this year, uh, is a division of Stallion 51 Corporation. And we've been operating the Mustang for over 25 years. And one of the questions we've gotten in this program is like, hey, can I do the VFR side in the P-51 Mustang? The answer is yes, you can. We can cover the real basics of VFR and usual attitude in that airplane. Well, the thing that's interesting here, especially when you talk about the IFR environment, you've totally blocked out the cockpit. You're talking about shading it, so there's absolutely no awareness whatsoever. Two, you're actually in a jet, which of course is a whole different ball game when you talk about unusual attitudes and anything that even hinges on acro. And then finally, more than anything else, it's the end of a progression of steps. Um, I'm curious how you, one, adapted the L-39 and just what that part of the program's like. Well, you're exactly right, and you've heard the, 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 the uh, phrase coined many times, one peak is worth a thousand scans. In the L-39, we have a curtain that comes completely over the canopy and in the front, so you're totally immersed. There is no peaking in that environment. All you have are the instruments, so that allows us to branch out and do true instrument recoveries. In the worst case situation, that's what you're going to fall back on. There's nothing magic about it. It's just being being there and understanding it and doing it. And I guess the great phase is a lot of people, they don't know what they don't know. And uh, so we take that envelope and expand it out and uh, allow them to see it and to practice uh, the best recovery techniques. And they can take that and put it in their bag of safety. And uh, hopefully one day they won't have to use, but if they do need to, they have the skill set to make it work. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online audio and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio and video programs every year. Only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. 
it seems like you've put the proper emphasis on understanding the physiological issues involved in a sudden upset, an unusual attitude, and especially in environments where we really don't consider that much. Well, Jim, you're exactly right. Uh, I'd like to say that I came up with this concept. That's certainly not the truth. The military has been teaching aeromedical aspects of, of vertigo, disorientation, false illusions for many, many years to, to all military aviators. But that segment's been left out of the civilian world. Uh, never did I have one course in, in the aeromedical aspects of uh, unusual attitude work or, or that. So that's a very strong thing that we bring to the table in the ground school side. It's totally missing and is a key element for the uh, prevention of unusual attitudes. Well, here on the floor of MBAA 2012, with everything going on, it was nice to see emphasis get placed back on something that's near and dear to my heart, because one of the problems in being in the news business is we keep hearing the bad news. The person who got confronted with something that they couldn't deal with wound up totally unprepared in one form or another. And it's this kind of program, this kind of training that I hope we see more of, and more important, I'd really like to, one, visit the location, but two, I think this is a conversation I'd love to have again with you in about a year to see what you've learned. Well, I appreciate you coming over and, and spreading the word of safety and, and because it is key. It, you know, this is all fun and, and it gets the whole business uh, aviation community is such a big plus to the economy, but it's all based on because it's a safe form of transportation. So I, I think we'll make a contribution to that safety aspect and uh, hopefully the flight departments will grasp it and, and uh, It'll, it'll maybe save a life one day. I hope so. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.